Remember, it's not just the Nolan. It's the Wan one as well. Ooh, you're right. There's... It's very, very... The both these heroes reliant on dashes. Smash them. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome you to match number three, game number one in this best of one series between the Indonesian rep Dewa United and the Filipino rep AP Bren. With both of these teams being able to secure their wins today, one of their win streaks will break. We'll see who comes out on top in Group A. Wow. Early on already. Now it's going to be Ogwen who walks up into the enemy jungle just trying to provide some utility, but yeah, it's also a Guinevere roam that's actually used up by Shaco here. Not the jungle that we usually see, so maybe that oh, win wait, rate what? can turn. Yeah, another uh, plot twist here in the drafts for Dewa United as well. They're basically saying you're not the only ones who can do it, but this Guinevere in the roam. Last time we saw it, I believe it was Godiva actually who used the, Gu the Guinevere as a roamer. But back then, you need that passive to still get the Spatial Migration knockup. This time, just with the Spatial Migration alone, you will be able to get a knockup. So, a, a more instant source of initiation for the Guinevere this time around. But I think, oh, wait a minute, Lanaya getting very aggressive and that's gonna be first blood falling to the hands of Lanaya. Already a 1-0-0 for the Devil United jungler with that first takeaway in the first minute. But back to that point, with so much purifies from the side of AP Bren. How effective can this Guinevere roam actually be? I think if it can bait out all the purifies, it's still going to be effective, right? That Requiem lasts for quite a long time. And hey, for Shaco, he has a lot of survivability. He jumps in, he can also just jump back out. What AP Bren needs to be careful of is the early game snowball potential. Spatial migration connecting for Shaco onto Ogwen. Just to try to out-damage him, out-trade him, but Ogwen gets a lot of HP back with the Vengeance reset in this trade. He's got to be careful though, now chased down by three, a flicker, but all the way just to the pit, he gets a stun down with the Vengeance as well, with the Spatial Migration and the help of Kaze gets the kill back. It's two kills traded in by AP Brenda. They're able to find a turtle for free. Okay, so already a very different idea that we're seeing here, coming in from Dewa United. They're looking to pressure AP Bren from the early stage of the game, realizing that most of the heroes that they have opted for do require a little bit more time to progress in towards the items, mainly the gold lane and, of course, Farsa. Looking at the emblems, nothing too crazy, right? The only thing I want to see or point out is the fact that Shaco has gone for Brave Smite. Tank emblem into that Brave Smite with the power... Uh, with the Wilderness Blessing, actually, to rotate across the map a bit faster. How effective it is is still something that I am questioning. Still something that I want to see here. Because so far, despite the two kills that they have, the fact that AP Brand are still equal in gold shows you that it's going to be quite a problem for Dewa United once it comes to the mid game. That level 4 power spike for the uh, Phobius, it's going to hit. It truly is. Shaco opening up the map giving some information to his team. But it looks like Owen, he's going very, very aggressive. Even the final slash with the final Requiem there saves Shaco for a bit. Kaltizi gets a good taunt up onto Lanaya. Appraiser's Wrath even committed down in the enemy jungle. But both teams will decide to just take it slow. Just like you guys can on Omni. Go and watch the documentary, mini documentary on Evos, Sis, Brand Ambassador, Una, and Bigatron's player, Vin. More of a fight, Shaco taunts it up. Oh, final slash dodged away from Shaco. Spatial migration what? into the front, trying to find a cheeky little pick up, but will not find it. But it does give Watts a bit more time to get that weakness point. Ooh, that was, that was a little close for comfort though. I thought, all right, cool, Shaco got out. Wasn't able to be taken down by AP Bren, but then he dashes way back in. Luckily, it didn't amount to much from the side of AP Bren, but it does give them enough space to perhaps set up for this turtle first. Let's see, Nalanaya is level 8. From the side of AP Bren, oh, Shaco goes in! And it's a Requiem to combo it together, the Fracture as well, Ogwen oh, taking low, but he's still able to survive! A final slash as well to bring Dixon and Shaco to the right side of the map. And now even a Demonic Force committed in by Flaptizia to zone the rest of Dewa United away. For AP Brand, the rest of them, to pick up a free turtle. Well played by the Filipino reps, AP Bren. 
They realized that Kyle Teasy was actually a level below of Lanaya at that point. They forced a the fight, was able to get an advantage, burn out the resources coming in from Dell United, and were able to get a bigger say in terms of that U turtle. But here we are. Wu Gwen. Man, Ar Arlet Rome is kind of gross. It's back to its oppressive state. The adjustment to the base stats, right? That was really what kind of stopped Arlet from becoming a roamer anymore because you have to build damage on this hero to actually deal damage. Now for the healing, the sustain and the damage, with those base stats already being buffed out, he can just go in without a care in the world with tank uh, items, even with the quantum charge. That's a quantum charge on the Arlet. And now it's going to be a siege down below. Ogwin marching forward again in the bottom lane. Why can it be changed? You see the final slash brings them back. It is a free hit from Super Marco. A desperate requiem for the side of Shaco trying to evade. But Ogwin still gets out. It's only two members taken out for free. AP Bren dominating the bottom lane team fight. They're so patient. They're coming back with Dell United leading in that early game. They've turned it completely around. AP Ren six minutes in, already a 2k gold lead. And they've taken all the kills for themselves as well. Turning it back, taking all the turrets from Dell United one by one. As they look to invade even the buffs coming in from Dell United. Shaco goes in. Go for the orange buff. Steal Kaltesi, Appraiser's Wrath. The crossbow tang is ready, but look at the zoning from Super Marco. He's walking up forward and dishing out damage to provide the cover that the team needs. And even up top, this lane that should be an oppressive one against the Fovius. We saw this same matchup earlier in match number one, Mielo versus Flapteezy. Flapteezy was on the Uranus and Flapteezy was able to bully the Fovius. Not the same outcome this time. No, it's a completely different story. When with Flapteezy being able to win that lane, he is going to have a little bit more say in terms of this next neutral objective, where AP Brand have actually already baited it towards their side. Kyle Teezy and Lanaya. This might just be a free turtle here for AP Brand. They will have no way to get into this turtle pit unless Lanaya just dashes in, but now gets caught in the demonic force. Chase down all the way. The more you dash, the more damage Flapteezy does. And Ogwin picks up the kill. At this point, even when the Arlet gets the kill, does it really matter that much? A turn. Ogwin got three kills in the first game. Now he's on three kills again. How? He's a roamer. He's a killer roamer. He's a killer roamer. That's what we're getting here in this match. But they were united. They found a little bit of compensation, right? They were able to get a little bit more pressure in the bottom lane. But look at this. Final slash. Kays and Lanaya locked down. It's another realm, though. Granted him enough HP. And that's the crossbow of Tank from Watt to shift it over. A good shutdown picked up with the appraisers. Brad connects onto two. Kaltizi dashing out to safety. Dixon still running him down. But Dewa wants to secure this purple buff. Can they? Kaltizi just retries it. Gets a taunt in and gets out. He doesn't have it. He doesn't get it. Nope. So it's a red tree clean from Kyle. Man, Lanaya. All his re resources are being kept away from him by AP Bren. And to make it all worse, Super Marco will be able to secure a tower in that top side, propelling him even further in this game with him already quite far ahead. Where is he at? Super Marco, 103 KDA so far. Not even a single time taken down. He's playing it chill because, again, in this matchup, it's already a pretty good matchup for the Bruno against the Wan Wan. Especially when you're just trading, when you're just farming. The Wan Wan is actually going to be the one losing out on, in a lot of these trades uh, slowly. Why is that? Is it the poke coming in from Bruno? It's the damage and obviously also the dash. The dash that gets him to safety whenever the Wan Wan tries to get an all-in. The only way Wan Wan wins is if he gets the weakness point all around and get a crossbow with Tang in to win that trade. It's an all-in, not a trade. But against Bruno, it's almost impossible. As long as Super Marco times that dash properly, uh, according to the first skill of Wan Wan, there's a very, very low chance of Wan Wan actually hitting that. And to make it worse, Super Marco actually has Purify. Yep. So Reset. just in case all goes south, he can just pop in that Purify to completely deny all those weakness points. And what? is caught in a disadvantage. And there you go, the Lord already just blitzed in by AP Bren, by the bees. And that's gonna be a free one over to the Filipino representatives. They're having a field day in the ninth minute of the game with the Lord spawning up top. It's a big, big question mark as to why Dewa United did not ban the Phobius in the second phase. And why is that, Eterna? Did you 
Maybe they thought the same, right? They thought, Arlet, no way, it's going to be flexed into the rope position. And then meanwhile, Ogwin says, hold my bottle. <laughs> I mean, that definitely is a possibility. Meanwhile, Anaya, though, he's angry. Fracture, some damage, but that's some good damage back as well. Anaya uh -oh. might be picked off. It's a one for one. It's not worth it for Dewa. And Ogwin picks up the fourth kill in this game. The killer. He has almost all of the kills that AP Bren has this game. And he's a tank, he's a roamer. He knows he's a roamer, right? But he also knows he's Arlet. <laughs> he's vengeance. He's vengeance. The towers are gonna be falling one by one here as all three lanes are gonna be pushing. Ogun being able to control that bottom side. Shaco! It's a Requiem, but Super Marco just gets out with the Purify and it's Dewa who actually have to commit another realm. A big resource. They're trying to siege down the base turret. Devil United doing a good job at still keeping it intact, but it's lost so much HP, and the next push should certainly be one base turret down. Back foot. Devil United, they're definitely on the back foot right now. 6k gold lead and counting. The entire map, ladies and gentlemen, as you see it here, is red. AP Bren, they're controlling every single lane, every single interaction that both of these teams are going to be experiencing. And all they need to do now is just buy time, get as many resources away, aka the buffs which they already have, and take down the Lord or even utilize it to bait Dale United at this point. And I always say this when I'm talking about AP Bren, whether if whether if it's I'm casting or if I'm streaming, but when AP Bren gets a lead in the early game, no matter how small that lead is, they're probably one of the best teams at utilizing that gold lead to build into a death ball. If you get if you give AP Bren a 3,000 gold lead in the mid game. It's almost over most of the time. It's very rare that they actually throw this lead. And for Dewa, especially considering the composition that they have right now, countered heavily by the Fovius, that chance gets even smaller. Flashbacks. To what? Echo Express. Echo Express. Flashbacks. See, the way AP Bren do it, though, they're very, like, they're very calm about it. They don't go for fights. The way Echo does it is, we fight. They fight. They also drive sometimes. They drive the, the game. And looks like, oh, what? That's what happens when you try to engage on them. The phobias, the more you dash, the more damage Flap does. Dixon brought back in one last shot. Super Marco picks up a double. You try to find AP Bren with a gold lead and it will not go your way. Did you see that? Yeah. He's disappeared. Luckily, he's on a fair miss. He can get Hold back to the full and respawn in, but with Cal Teasy walking up on this Frederick like an absolute Chad. It's Lanaya who gets sniped down with a feathered airstrike all the way from the orange buff. Super Marco free hitting now, going on to Kays, and that's another health bar completely disintegrated. What follows next? It's a desperate spatial migration to the back, and the base will be taken down. 12 minutes, super fast games for maybe Bren.